You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. Welcome to the show. Thankful for you. Uh, the fact that you're spending a few minutes of your day with us means a tremendous amount. So thank you. Yeah, it does mean a lot to us, actually. Believe it or not, it really does. I hope you believe it. It's truth. Yeah, so uh, what do we got for today? I actually like this question. Um because I think that uh, I think it's actually just a misconception based on I don't know what. I also think it's not a mutually exclusive issue, meaning that there's one answer or another, not a combination of the two in some way or another, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm trusting that it will make sense <laughs> when we get rolling and answering the question. Um, but uh, yeah, are we going to head right in or is there a... Let, uh, yeah, let's, today's sponsor is brought to you by, that's right, your good friend, the Bald-Headed Bureau. <laughs> that's right. That is that headed up by Mr. Rob Burdick and he's got a message for you. He's a businessman, he's an entrepreneur and he's wondering, are you going to take the drone mapping bootcamp? Are you going to add dozens of tools to your toolbox? as a drone service provider, as a pilot, or as a program manager. Well, if you are like us and so many other people who see the value in drone mapping, then you're gonna have to come to a three day long class. Why? Because we're serious and so should you. We can really lower that learning curve by giving you all that information, six or seven exercises, depending on how many we get to. And you know what that means? That means double what you're going to get anywhere else. If you want to know what people really think of the drone mapping bootcamp, then why don't you just take the time to read the testimonials? Because maybe you'll learn about George, who <laughs> recently created an entire career. What was it? One month, two months later, two months after the class? Yeah. And he's, he's not an anomaly or an outlier either. There's hundreds of them. He's and, just a doer. Yeah. That's the, that's the secret formula. Be a doer. That's right. On that bombshell, you might want to join us for a virtual drone mapping boot camp class. It's getting fired up. Our next series of courses is getting fired up next week. Uh, we've got UAV operations. We've got drone mapping. We've got interactive modeling. It's going to be a good time. Absolutely. So. Hello. It seems like drone mapping is a business tool that is more and more used primarily by workers that are already employed in their industries rather than by contracted drone pilots. Is that true? For example, it seems that farmers do their own droning, construction and mining companies use their own employees to do their own droning, surveyors do their own droning, etc. So where do you see any real opportunities, if any, for independent drone businesses to do mapping commercially? Thank you. Thank you, Michael, for the question. Very uh, honest question. You know, I think, uh, by the way, askdroneyou.com is where Michael asked his question. So head there to ask yours. We would love to hear from you. Um, my first question is, he's made some assertions. What are those based on? Uh, I really don't know. And, and I would love to hear back from you, Michael, where, because you made uh, four or five different assertions there relative to different industries and how mapping might be done by the entities themselves as opposed to a DSP. And so I'm really curious where you're getting that, uh, that information, um, because maybe it's something that we should know more about, frankly. But generally speaking, I would think there's a lot of opportunity and we've seen that with students and so forth. And that's not to say that it's, there are not entities that are trying to bring it on board. I think there's both. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, exactly. I, I really do, Rob, to really kind of curtail or not curtail, but to tag along to what you were saying. Uh, I couldn't agree more with you that there are businesses that are bringing on experienced drone pilots and there are businesses that are bringing up people through the ranks. Absolutely. And in fact, we're seeing that we've been contacted by a couple of very large companies that are bringing them up through the ranks and are interested in sort of building their own internal program. What I'll tell you is the people that we hear from that are in that boat, they're typically the larger organizations, 
not necessarily smaller ones. And one of the things that we've seen, and I'm going to expect for you to spend more time on answering the question, but one of the things we've seen in the industry, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of these maybe mid-sized to even smaller entities trying to do what Michael's talking about, but in fact realized it's much more involved and expensive than they thought. And so they're going back the other way to DSP. Mm -hmm. So we've seen that as well. So seen both. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the bottom line is that there definitely is opportunity. Maybe that's where we should focus. And I think also th this is a good point to kind of bring this up, but I, I know some people really want to have some sort of analysis of the available opportunities at play. And, you know, we can kind of talk about paralysis by analysis um, because I am literally the antithesis of that. <laughs> um, I am, And that describes me pretty well, or at least it used to. I've gotten a little better, but anyways. Yeah, and I would say that I'm the opposite. I really am. And I created a great drone business without planning, luckily. Thank God. Um, but I would say something that's important is I've noticed this with police officers, um, public safety. I've also noticed it a lot in construction, which is people who want to move up or they want to get the advancement. They go off and they learn these things themselves. Yeah. I mean, I think I know, how, what are we trying to, like two or three APD people? And they're still figuring out um, their drone program. Meanwhile, a bunch of police officers are like essentially putting themselves in a better position to take advantage of that opportunity. Yep. And I would just say like, I know... Um, Look, people, I'm sorry, Rob, I'm just going to do this. Um, there is no guarantee in this world. At what point are you going to prepare yourself to take advantage of opportunity when it strikes? Have we not learned this during the pandemic? If you didn't have money saved up, you could not have taken uh, opportunity of this stupid rally or have taken an opportunity and shorted the market and made a year's income. I don't know. Either way, you wouldn't have had the opportunity whether you played it down or up. It doesn't matter. At what point are you just going to start preparing yourself to say, look, we know this is a tool. We know it's valuable. It's important to get trained up on. That way you can service numerous verticals so if the vertical that you get chosen for isn't the one that you plan for it doesn't matter because you know the systems involved at the core sorry i'm done with this like oh but if it doesn't feel good i might not do it well you're probably not gonna be successful it's never gonna feel good do you want to do you want to hey, look it's hard work being poor and it's hard work being rich if which one do you want to choose like choose it go <laughs> sorry i love engineers but like it's like the puppy dog like <gasps> It's really exciting, <laughs> you know, and then it's like, that's all it is. Right. You know, and, and we have a friend like that. I know, I know, you know who I'm talking about. Um, and I love the guy to death, but sometimes, and I'm the same way. You just have to wake up and be like, get out of your head. It's okay. Press forward. Start working. You know what else is okay? What's that? Doing a little market research. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is what we're trying to do is find a balance here. So, Thank you, Rob, for saying that. It's a balance. It's absolutely a balance. See, here's the thing, <laughs> Michael. I would, I would find myself much more um, sort of in line with your way of thinking, at least as best as we can interpret. And, and I see it as wise, <laughs> right? In making sure that you understand the market before you go and invest your time and effort, which makes a ton of sense to me. I think that on the other hand, we definitely, and so we don't know enough about you to make any judgments. That is not what's going on here. For sure. No judgments are being made. We never really are ever, but, so, but no, but some people take it that we are. One person thought that they were, but yeah. Yeah. And, and certainly people when. take it that we are. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, I think that the bottom line is that there is opportunity. And I think that the assertions that were made in your question, Michael, are while there's some truth to them, they do not negate the opportunities that do exist. That's the bottom line. For sure. And there are opportunities that exist for existing employees and there are opportunities that exist for DSPs. And it always comes down to relationships and it always comes down to the numbers game. And are you putting yourself out there? Because if you're not putting yourself out there, that's failure number one. Failure number two is once you put yourself out there and you can't explain what you're doing, how it provides dollarized value or why it matters to the other party, you failed the second time. Okay. Now for me, I like failure. Why? Because you learn so much faster from failing than you do from success. No, you know what? There it are. It hurts, but I like it. Yeah, but some. It's like I don't know. I mean, you, you could take the two of us, and if if the pain of failure is like how much of a punch can you take? 
that's me. <laughs> Paul's Yikes. probably going to be a lot harder. Um, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> but, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, meaning that you could take a much harder punch um, relative to um, handling failure. So anyways, but you're right. And, and I think, you know, one of the, and I don't remember where I heard this, but it was very recently. I mean, if you can... If you can just go after what you're interested in because you're interested in it, and, and I don't mean to sound idealistic here or even um, myopic about this, but if you can go into it because you love it, because you feel like there's some value that you can bring to X industry, X group of people, whatever, and you love it and you know they're going to love what you offer and then the money will come – then I think you're going to be just fine. If you're kind of more in line with, I'm just really looking for sort of a steady thing that I know I can get into that has a very high probability of success that I can make X amount of money. Well, then maybe this isn't the right opportunity, right? So, man, so much of this goes into e each of our, our psyches and how we approach life. And man, I, I don't know, I don't mean to be an armchair psychologist here because he was just asking is there opportunity or not yes <laughs> so both ways and you'll be better adept to taking advantage of that opportunity if you invest in yourself right we could sit here and be like yeah we're a drone school yes we profit from teaching people it's also kind of hard to argue that we're profiteers when we offer 40 plus classes for 47 dollars a month i mean it's true and it, you know so that being said there is opportunity but the point i'm trying to make is that if you make yourself value as an expert and you're able to do drone mapping and you're able to push these um, deliverables and explain their value and help people understand it, the sky is the limit for you and you are going to be adept into taking advantage of opportunities when they do arise, whether you're working for someone or you're owning a business. By the way, some people really don't like owning businesses. Some people want to work for someone else. They don't have that responsibility. Either way, you can still invest in yourself. You can still learn what you need to learn so that when the opportunity does arise, you can raise your hand and say, yeah, I know how to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh, in terms of, I'm getting fired up in terms of taking advantage of the opportunity that is out there, that includes getting out of the box and understanding what maybe sort of up and coming opportunities are that have not been, um, have not, what's the word that I'm looking for? They've not been leveraged very much mm. yet. And one of those is the 3d modeling. And so that brings us to the example of George, who's just been a phenomenal student. He's been at multiple classes and you know what? He created through educating a client, bingo, an incredible opportunity relationships that is going to serve him for quite some time. Great and job. you want to talk about a return on investment. But he's not doing the traditional mapping that would be for a farmer or even a construction company. He's taking it another level and doing some of the interactive 3D modeling stuff that Paul's been teaching. And man, it's really cool to see people like George have that kind of success. It is really cool, but it's also not surprising, right? Because when you're open and willing to learn and you work really, really hard and you create relationships to try to solve problems, what happens? Opportunity comes. Sorry, did I crush your... You're, did I hit you right at the end? Did I stop you again? Did I interrupt you? I'm I'm killer. I'm good. <laughs> I'm sorry. You didn't do it. No. Okay. 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 Right. Guilty no, just, conscience. No, I just think it's important <laughs> to just talk about once again. This is an example of what we have been saying time after time after time after time and again. When will people listen? It's not about what you know. It's about what you do with it. Yeah. And what I mean by that is, if you're always willing to learn like George, and he's very willing to learn. He's very open-minded. He asks very good questions. He doesn't make assumptions. I could learn from that. He doesn't judge. I could learn from that. Like there's, <laughs> you know, he's a very, very like mindset, like just very calm. Yeah. And when I think of someone like him, I actually think of someone uh, uh, like my buddy, Michael Dickerson. He was a swimmer the tallest guy on our lacrosse team. And he was actually one of my best friends in high school because I just, he, he could shoot the shit, did not care at all. Like there was no judgment. That's what I loved about him. And he was always willing to learn. And the thing about him though is that he was always calm. You know why? He swam every morning. Mm. And I'm learning how literally exercise and having that calm that comes naturally from repetitive exercise is literally like a business trump card. Not, yeah. you know, yeah. It's not a secret a, weapon. 
it is a secret weapon. Well, and and I would say this about George as well that I my guess in what I've seen, which is r- relatively little in terms of interacting with him, you've interacted with him a lot more, but I would guess that, you know, we described sort of the different ends of the scale, Paul and me. I would think that he's right in the middle where he mm-hmm. does do some some sort of evaluations of a market, for example, and then he also says, "Well, I'm just going to go for it." So he he's a good mix of that, uh, which I think is what it takes. Is what it takes. So very very long winded answer, but um, I hope that it gives you some inclination that yeah, there's definitely opportunity out there um, if you're willing to, I don't know, put in the work, I, which I'm sure you are. I mean, my assumption is that you are. You're asking the question. He is asking the question. Um, did we answer his question? It was I think about so. Opportunity. The only, the, only, I mean, the only thing I think we could do in terms of going a little bit further is w- what are some more examples of that opportunity? But or I think are those we are seeing trends. Or I mean, I'm definitely seeing trends of companies wanting to hire people internally, but I'm also seeing the tail end of that trend where they realize that if you don't have the right person for the job, your drone program never takes off. They've as uh, as Josh. Marriott would say they've got to catch the bug. Otherwise, you're not going to be successful because they just don't care enough. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just another task. And so that's why they're going to DSPs who are super passionate exactly. about this stuff. Yeah. So it's like, oh, no brainer. Ding, ding, ding. I also will say, I mean, even one of our competitors, um, Brandon, um, he got purchased. Uh, his his small business was purchased and acquired by another company. And that's a great example. If he was a drone service provider, now he's an employee, mm-hmm. right? There's that transfer. This is not a prisoner's dilemma. Okay. You, are, you don't have to go down one path and then you're stuck to it. You don't have to do that. Okay. I would say learn from my ADHD. If there's one thing I've learned about ADHD, it's that you get to explore rabbit holes a lot and you get a much better sense for what you want in life. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to hey, say. So you can do parallel tracks. positive, yeah, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> I saw a Mayor Keller tweet yesterday uh, that dyslexia, he wants to build up people who have dyslexia. And I tweeted back at him and I said, it's one of the most seven common traits of highly successful people. Yeah. Myself included. Yeah. No, I mean, I've heard that. I've heard that. And there's probably some truth to that. There is. That's probably why I type A-P-P-L and not (laughs) A-A-P-L every time I look up Apple on Thinkorswim. On that bombshell, (laughs) that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 